and this tutorial will create three fun and easy vector graphic designs in Inkscape. For the first design, we'll create a cylindrical text logo effect. To begin, I'll use the text tool to create a text object. I'll type something lame like warp text. For the font, I'll go with Roboto Bold. Now I'm going to go to the Select tool and scale up the text object while holding Ctrl to maintain the width to height ratio. And in order to warp the text later, I need to turn the text object into a path by going to Path, Object to Path. Now I'll go to the Squares and Rectangles tool and create a small rectangle here. I'll make this a medium gray. Now I'll go back to the Select tool and duplicate the rectangle by pressing Ctrl D. And I'll move the duplicate to the right while holding Ctrl to keep it aligned with the other one. And I'll do this a few more times. I now want to align the left side of the first rectangle with the left side of the text. So first I'll select the rectangle, then hold Shift and also select the text. And to align them, I'll open the Align and Distribute dialog. And with the last selected chosen as the anchor, I'll click this button to align their left edges. I also want to align the right edge of the last rectangle with the right edge of the text. So I'll select the rectangle, hold Shift and select the text, then click this button. Finally, I want to put even horizontal spacing between all of the rectangles. To do this, I'll select all the rectangles and click this button. I'm now going to hold Shift and select the text and group all of this together with Ctrl G. Okay, next I'll go to the Circles and Ellipses tool and create an ellipse over here. I'll be deleting the ellipse later, but I'll just give it a different fill color for now so that I won't interfere with the colors of the logo. Now I'll go back to the Select tool and click the ellipse to show the rotation handles, then I'll rotate it just a bit. Now in order for the next step to work correctly, the logo needs to be above the ellipse. So I'll click the Raise Selection to Top button here. Then I'll select them both and go to Extensions, Generate from Path, Pattern Along Path. And here I want to have the Pattern Copies mode set to Repeated Stretched and the Deformation type set to Ribbon. I'll leave everything else like it is for the moment and check Live Preview. Okay, that doesn't look too bad, except the logo copies are right up against each other. To fix this, I can add some spacing between them in here. That'll work. Now I'll click the Apply button and close this out. I can go ahead and delete the original logo and the ellipse. One thing I'm noticing that doesn't look quite right is that the rectangles here and here are on top of the text. To fix this, I'll double click this group of objects to enter into it, select this path here, and click the lower select into bottom button. And I'll do the same for the other path. If I want, I can select the text group and change the color. I can also select all of the rectangles and turn them into a single path by going to Path, Union, and change their color as well. And that's it for design number one. Next, we'll create an abstract liquid background effect. First, I'll go to the Circles and Ellipses tool, hold Ctrl, and create a small circle. I'll open the Fill and Stroke dialog and give the circle a blue fill. Now, I'll go to the Select tool and duplicate the circle with Ctrl D, make the duplicate a lighter blue, then hold Ctrl and move it to the right a bit. Now I'll duplicate both of these circles and move them to the right. And I'll do this a few more times. I now want to select all of these circles and use the Align and Distribute dialog to put equal horizontal spacing between them. Then I'll group all of these together with Ctrl G, duplicate the group, and bring it down a bit while holding Ctrl. And I'll create a few more rows like this. I'm now going to select all of these rows and put equal vertical spacing between them. Then I'll group them all together. Next, with the group selected, I'll go to the Tweak tool here. For the settings, I'll set Force to the max of 100, and under Mode, I'll choose Push Parts of Paths in any direction. I can now start clicking and dragging inside the group to blend the circles together, creating a liquid effect. It's likely going to take some time to get a result that looks pretty good. Now you might get some gaps where the canvas shows through, like here. To fix this, we can first go to the Squares and Rectangles tool and create a rectangle over this. My rectangle is already one of the colors that I use for the circles, which is what I want. 
but if it happens to be a different color, we can use the color picker tool to pick one of the colors from the group. Now we can go to the select tool and send the rectangle to the bottom, which closes in the gaps. And with the rectangle still selected, we can press Ctrl D to duplicate it, hold Shift and select the group, then right click and choose set clip. Now we can use this for a background. Also because it's clipped, we can go back to the tweak tool and continue working on it. Okay, that's it for design number two. For the final design, we'll create an effect that is similar to what the Blend tool in Adobe Illustrator can achieve. To begin, we'll need a color palette. For mine, I just did a search for color palettes on Google, then drag and drop this image onto the canvas. You can do the same, or you can just create your own using whatever colors you like. Now I'm going to go to the Circles and Ellipses tool, hold Ctrl and create a small circle. I'll press the D key to switch to the Color Picker tool, and click the first color in the palette to change the circle to that color. Next I'll go to the Select tool, and a cool tip is that we can press the space bar to switch back and forth between our current tool and the Select tool. Okay, with the Select tool active, I'll duplicate the circle with Ctrl D, move it to the right while holding Ctrl, then press the space bar to go back to the Color Picker tool and choose the second color. And I'm going to repeat this process for the remaining colors. Okay, now I want to select all of the circles and use the Align and Distribute dialog to put equal horizontal spacing between them. I also need to change them all into paths by going to Path, Object to Path. Next, with all of the circles still selected, I'll go to Extensions, Generate from Path, Interpolate. And here I want to have Exponent set to 1, Interpolate Steps set to something high like 20, the first interpolation mode chosen here, and I only want the Interpolate Style option checked here. Now I'll check Live Preview. That looks pretty good. If your circles don't look well blended, you can try a higher value for interpolation steps. Okay, I'll click apply and close this out. If I select all of this, I currently have multiple groups of circles. I want to ungroup them all by pressing shift Control g then press Control g to group all of the circles into a single group. Next, I'll create a path that I want to place this group of circles onto. For this, I'll go to the pen tool, switch to the spiral mode up here, and create a path with some loops. Now I want to go to the Select tool and copy this path into the clipboard by pressing Ctrl C. Then I can select the circle group, open the Path Effects dialog by going to Path, Path Effects, click the plus button at the bottom of the dialog, choose Bend here, then click the Link to Path and Clipboard button. There we go. And if I want, I can go to the Node tool, click the Spiral path in here, and adjust the nodes a bit. I think the blended object is a little too thick, so I can go back to the select tool and select the blended object, then I can remove bin from it by clicking the minus button in the path effects dialog, and now I can scale it down some while holding control. I could then add bin back to it, and click the link button again. However, because the path is now pretty long compared to the blended object, the stretching messes up the blending a bit. To fix this, I'm first going to remove bend again, then I'll double click the blended object to enter the group, move the last circle here to the right sum while holding control, select them all, and put equal horizontal spacing between them. I need to blend this in some more now though. So I'll select all of the circles again, open the interpolate dialog by going to extensions, previous extension settings. And this time I only need to use a small number for the steps. Three should be good. Now I'll select all of this and ungroup it with shift control G then double click the canvas to get outside the main group. I can now select the group again, add bin back to it, and click the link button. And if I like how everything looks, I can finalize the bin path effect by going to path, object to path. And now I can delete the path here. Okay, those are three vector graphic designs in Inkscape. If you would like to learn more, be sure to click a video on the screen. Thanks for watching.